Here's how to configure questions and answers in Microsoft Search. You can configure Q&As in Microsoft Search to provide direct answers to direct questions. Users search for questions. We all know that. The thing is, a lot of users never find the answer to that question. They just give up and look elsewhere for that answer. And that's a shame because really the answers are going to be on the internet more than likely. It's just that search didn't return that. Maybe that's based on lack of metadata, lack of other information that would provide that answer. There's an easier way and it's using the Q&A feature of Microsoft Search. So why should you use this? Well, let me ask a different question. Do you hate your users? If not, you wanna make it easy to find answers to their questions. Things like, when is payday? What holidays do they have off? And believe me, they are searching for answers to those questions. In fact, those are the two most common questions people are asking on an intranet. But there's many more like those questions, which is why you wanna use analytics to know about those questions and whether search was able to find an answer to that question. That's the most important one. Let's see how we can not only improve your search, but also make it easier and take less clicks for a user to find an answer to a common question. But first, let's actually see how this looks to the end user so that you know how this is gonna benefit you. So I'm here on my intranet, and if I wanna find out when payday is, I can type in, when is payday? And right here above any other search results, which right now I don't have any other search results, you'll see a special search result here that's matching a Q&A. You'll see a link right here. Right now it's linked to the HR site. Ideally, this would be linked to an official document that describes the frequency of when paychecks go out or when direct deposits go out. You'll also see a quick answer here. So I don't even have to click on this result. It says direct deposits occur on the 15th of the month and the last day of the month. So I found an answer. I didn't have to click into any result. I didn't have to read an entire page of text to find the answer to this. This is the kind of experience you want to give to your users so that they find what they need and they get back to work, keeping them productive. Now let's see how we can add these. For that, I'm just gonna hop into the M365 Admin Center. And like other things with Microsoft Search, we're gonna go into Settings and Search Intelligence. Once you're here, you're gonna click on Answers, which is where this feature is found, and then click on Q&A. Right here, you're gonna see that question that just got provided to me as an end user. We can click on this and see what this thing looks like. You see a preview of what the user's gonna see, and then you see all of the different fields that can be configured for this. As you're updating this information or creating a new one, you can always refer up to this top view to see what the user experience is gonna look like. This definitely saves you a lot of time because you don't have to flip back to another tab where you can rerun this search and then make changes, you know, going back and forth. That's not that efficient of a process. So it's really cool that they provide that preview right at the top of the screen, right? But now let's add some new information. Let's add another question so we can see how this whole thing will work. We're just gonna click on add question. And then the title for this, we can use, what are the holidays in the US? So this isn't necessarily every holiday, but it's the ones that I care about as a user because it's the ones that we're gonna have off. That's what's important to me. It's a very commonly searched for thing. And for the URL for this, notice it's not required. Maybe we leave this one off. But if you had a particular page in your intranet where all this information could be found, you definitely wanna put that the link to that URL here. So I'm gonna skip this, but we do want to put the actual answer. Otherwise, what was the point of doing any of this? So I'm gonna paste in an answer here, but we can do a lot more with this. Notice how it says there is markdown support. That means that we can use special markdown to provide very simple formatting. That's not the only thing we can do though. There are some HTML elements supported with this interface. For one, we can use the strong tag to make some text bold. So if we add that in, then we'll see up in, up in our preview that New Year's Day is now bold. We can also use a table, which I think would be a better interface to present this information. So let me format this as a table. Now this looks much better. Let's add in some keywords. We can use holidays as a keyword here, but then as a reserved keyword, which can't be used on any other Q&A, 
I think US holidays would be a good one for this. We've also got options for if we want to restrict this to certain regions, which would make a lot of sense here. So we can pick US, maybe English and Spanish, both of those. So anyone in the US will get this particular result. In another country, we could have another Q&A that provides results just for them. So people always see the relevant results. You've also got options here for when things should be appearing or disappearing. In this case, I think it's better to just reuse this every year and we can update those dates as necessary. So let's publish this. And here's our new result. Now, one cool thing about the Q&A feature in Microsoft Search is that changes will appear immediately, just like bookmarks do. You don't have to wait for an hour or two to pass before these new Q&As are presented to users. This lets you respond very quickly to changes or announcements within the organization. So let's see how this new result looks. Let's go back to our intranet. And let's search for this new Q&A. And there it is. We've got to see more links so we can expand out this full chart, but there is our official list of holidays in the US. This appears above any other search result, making sure that users can find this information fast without having to dig through anything, search through any particular pages, even though this is probably also going to be listed on the HR site under some PDF file. But that's not the only way you can get these records imported. If you want to make bulk changes, bulk imports, bulk exports, that is all part of this feature as well. So let's dive into that. But why not take a second first to click that like button and subscribe to the channel so you know when I post more videos about Microsoft Search. If there's a colleague of yours that needs to know this information, make sure to share this with them as well so that we all as a community gain all this knowledge and sharpen our skill set. And if you're interested in listed library formatting and SharePoint using JSON, I've got an online course. There's a link in the description below so you can get all the details. Now let's get back and get into this bulk import export thing. So what you want to do generally to start with is you want to click this export button. Just export everything you've currently got because there's a particular format that this needs to be in. Let's open up the CSV in Excel and see what that looks like. So as you'll see here, we've got our CSV imported. It's a little bit tall. We can shrink this down just to make this a little bit more clear. But we do see all of our existing records here. We've got headers going across the top so you know which values go with which columns. And you even see our region settings here where we locked this to the US region. You can make any changes in here that you would like, including adding new records or editing the existing records. So if you're going to be making a lot of changes, this is probably a better way to do that. Notice that there are a few special columns here on the end, last modified, last modified by an ID. You do not want to change these at all. You're better off leaving these alone so that you don't end up with duplicate records or other errors. But once you make any changes to this you'd like, maybe adding some more records, You'll save this, but you'll go to this import option. You'll see another link to the CSV right here to get a blank version in case you want to start with that. But you'll just provide that CSV file right in here and all of those records will be imported as long as there's no errors. Now, one thing to note about these bulk imports is if you've got an error in there somewhere, the entire import will fail. It won't do a partial import. So some of these fields are going to be required depending on that state column that's in the import file. The state field represents the status of that record. It could be draft, suggested, scheduled, or published. Obviously a record in the published state is going to need to have more information than one that's in the draft state. But you can definitely import all of these as drafts and then just edit them and tweak as necessary in the admin center to make sure everything looks perfect before you publish them. Also, if you delete one of these in the interface, then it's going to be deleted for users immediately because remember, all of these changes take effect immediately and not after some delay. So what was your big aha moment from this video? For me, I think that the ability to format the answers and, and make them really pop out is a really cool feature of this as opposed to just plain text on the screen. I think that's a really cool feature. But did you even know that this whole feature was here? Did you know it was all hiding 
in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you want to find more information on Microsoft Search and other features in this, then click the video on the screen to get started with the next cool feature of Microsoft Search.